Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the season finale of Jet. A great episode. A lot of interesting things went down in the season finale, so let's break it down. I really like how this episode was constructed, where it's like, obviously, we're dealing with present time, but at the same time, we're like cutting back and forth between like that nine hour period before like you know jet's kind of planning everything out last minute because everything has kind of been set up in this motion i just like pieces of the plan coming to come coming together like jackie and jet visiting that dude like you get bits and pieces of the plan but you really don't see it all come together fully until the end of the episode but i really like uh they broke into that dude's place like his wife kept waving him like come on check did you forget to set the alarm and then just jet sitting over there in the corner in a chair and turns it on it's okay i'm not here to rob you and basically, like, me and Jackie, we basically want to talk to your husband. Also, you should know, your husband did put on a security alarm. And Jet, it, it's a low-key flex of being like, yeah, I snuck in here even despite your alarm and everything. That's not Jet's style, but it is like a low-key flex, and I like that. And then there's a whole situation with... Uh, Charlie Dylan with Vivian. I love it's it's such a weird situation because he's like, How about you go in there, get naked, and lay on the bed and wait for me? I'm like, Wait, what? You're saying this in such an authoritative sense while you're also kind of arguing? It's like, Wait, what? And it's kind of like, She Benny's about to kind of get in the middle of it, but she's telling Benny not. Well, no, he told Benny not to. And she wanted to get Benny involved, but then it's like, wait, you said you weren't going to get Benny involved. And like later on, she's trying to get her clothes off and everything. She's asking Benny to help because it's like, obviously, Charlie's dealing with the fact is his son literally got killed right in front of him last episode. So he's dealing with that. Obviously, he's trying to run through because he was checking on a lot of people trying to understand this whole situation because one of the people he was asking about was Quinn. So it's one of those things that just trying to get in contact with a lot of people, I guess, like trying to get in contact with anyone that can help him track down Jet. But also try to understand what the hell went down. Obviously, we know ain't no getting in contact with Quinn. He tried to get in contact with Quinn before. That was a whole conversation last episode. But nevertheless, so there's all that. I like the whole Fred and Malibu situation. That was kind of crazy. I love that he did kind of put like his um, like tissue. He threw him in kind of a drawer. And she makes reference to it later on. And be like, oh, poor baby. You know, you and the Vaseline and the tissues. But I also love that whole situation. I like that conversation she had where she was basically like, oh, yeah, like, I'm a really good dancer. Like, that kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere, right? She's like, I have a tendency to basically kind of like, what was it? Essentially, she'll have part of a conversation in her head, but she'll think she said it out loud. So she'll kind of continue the conversation. It's like, oh, you're a, you're a sniper. It's like, do I have any interesting skills? I'm a really good dancer. And she's like, so that's how we got there. But I love, like, Fred is kind of, like, awkward. Because obviously it's like, yeah, like, he was in prison. So this is a nice situation to be in but at the same time that's also mckay's girl so it's like it's complicated and and then he's like telling her to hide in the bathroom it's like he's not going to appreciate the fact is if he finds you here that's a whole thing and i love on her drive there he's telling mckay it's like oh you're my best friend and everything i was like why is he acting so weird because even mckay's like why are you acting weird i'm like right 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 First time on ecstasy. I forgot about that. And I love that literally two of the hours was just him driving. It was like two or three hours that they just kind of cut back to him just kind of being like high on life and smiling. Because I was like, I didn't get what he was so happy about. I was like, what is wrong with you? I was like, is it because of the whole Malibu thing? Which I'm sure maybe that plays some role in. Most likely not because that just probably makes him nervous. But then there's the whole, like, right, right, ecstasy. I am curious to see where that whole complicated thing kind of comes back around. I'm sure we definitely will get more with that potentially. So... There's that. Obviously, we're going to be getting into, like, the main thing of the episode, Jet. I, I also like that dream that she had. I guess you can almost... I'm guessing if you really break it down, maybe there's something to that that's, like, very, like... Well, especially how it ends with her kind of getting strangled from behind. It's like, well, that could just be that she, she got... She, even no matter how well-prepared Jet is, she can still get surprised. I guess you can think of that as kind of foreshadowing. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that just whole thing, anyway. I guess you can see elements of foreshadowing. I think if you probably go back and really examine the scene, you can be like, oh, that could mean this and this later on in the episode. I'm not a very smart person, so I, I attempted it and failed, so let's move on. Uh, but nevertheless, it's interesting to you know, sit down she has with Bestic. Basically, we get the full scope of the story with Crystal. Obviously, the whole back and forth situation. She was with Charlie first, but they fell in love, and it's a situation of... She was pregnant with Junior, and hearing, obviously, Charlie is 
kind of a mean dude. He hit her, he beat her up because she, he heard that like, oh, you fell in love with someone else while you're having my child. So Bestick obviously, like what he got with Crystal after she had already had Junior and Charlie had stolen him from her because Charlie didn't want to take the chance because he knew that if Junior grew up with Crystal, she would basically raise him her, him to hate Charlie and Charlie needs an ear to his throne to that whole situation. And, you know, sadly, he was saying like, Bessick was saying that like Crystal didn't die in an accident, that Charlie set that all in motion and stuff like that. It's actually kind of interesting too because like the circumstances, it's like, because, you know, Bessick is like, oh, it almost kind of, you know, Junior was in that area, you know, working with someone that Bessick was associated with, and he made himself a part of the deal. Looking in his eyes, he saw Crystal's eyes and stuff, you know? And it's such a crazy situation because it's like the frame job, well, the whole setup of blackmailing him and stuff like that, making him, he was almost so happy to receive help from us to kind of clear up his little situation. I would say little situation, but the very bloody, dismembered body situation. Obviously, we found out about it season uh, that first episode. But what's interesting is he was like, "Oh, do you really understand what I'm talking about?" And I love Jet kind of basically saying like, "Oh, essentially, it's almost like, you know, you wanted him to be away from his father, and obviously Charlie wanted him to grow up to not hate him. But in the end, he grew up spiting his dad, and basically it became almost like a snake eating its own tail. It's kind of this vicious, vicious cycle that is between Charlie and Bestick that kind of led to Junior's situation. So it just it it's a the whole situation. It's a snake feeding itself. That you know, Junior himself was a snake feeding you know, eating its own tail. So it is kind of interesting when you think about like the grand scheme of just like the bad blood between them and what it meant for Junior and it just kind of it was almost kind of like it was kind of an inevitable situation to find himself in that he ended up the way he did because of just the crazy circumstances and then it's like the whole conversation of like oh yeah I, even if you kill me you still got the Charlie situation to worry about but Jet's like we'll figure that out when the time comes as she's leaving bam Charlie walks in because it's interesting because like Charlie had gotten a call from Bessick and I was like I was thinking when he was like oh, I'll give you a prize I'm like the prize is Jet isn't it and they have a sit down and talk and basically it's the continuation of story time and then you slowly but surely you have Bestick unveil everything to Charlie let him know about you know everything that Junior was up to. It's like, oh yeah, that judge you paid off? Yeah, that was him making it seem like it was like Salas. Oh, other than that, he also, that guy that you got the information about that uh, deal? Oh no, that dude was fed a script. Now the question with that I'm very curious about, was it like, oh, straight up, like he was fed the script that like, oh, he knew what was going on? It's kind of interesting because that meant he knew he was going to die or at the very least he was going to be tortured. I don't think, I'm less likely thinking that, I'm thinking more so like, oh no, like Charlie told him, Junior told him, like, oh, no, no, this deal is going down, giving him that information. Because that's why, like, I feel like otherwise, why would he give it up so late? But I guess it was it was paid to be convincing. But it's like he got paid a 1000 for it. So I'm like, nah, it had to be, I don't know, maybe it's a combination of two. Either way, I just thought that was kind of like a fascinating little detail about it. Charlie learning about everything that Jet has been up to, the gold bars, the car and everything. And it's like, oh. You know, and then Jet has to explain being like it was because he was threatening Alice. And then the real kicker is, and it's such a small character to kind of bring back and we've only seen him the one time. It turns out this is all Victor's idea. Like he's the real head honcho in this whole situation. He runs things and basically well, it's also because Bessix has his own like personal vendetta in this situation, but it was also about proving that Charlie didn't have the power he did anymore. And basically Jet was proof of that. And it's kind of interesting that that's what this all was about, you know? So I just thought that was kind of fascinating. It's so interesting because the whole solid situation is still kind of out there and open, isn't it? Like that was never like 100% dealt with. Oh yeah, we also found out the ring he stole. Obviously, it was just like a $2,000 ring, but it was the ring, engagement ring Crystal had on her up till her death. But it turns out the reason why Charlie was so petty about it was not just because of the price he wasn't stealing it just to steal it back just because like oh f you probably partially that but mainly because it was his when it like his mom or his grandmom's ring so that it has sentimental value in that regard i don't remember if he had actually brought that up before of that i don't think he actually told jet ever 
I think, I don't remember what he told her at the beginning when she actually came back with the ring and everything or before it got, I don't think he told her really anything before it was taken, but afterwards, I don't remember. Regardless. Now, what really shocked me is Bestick killing Charlie. Didn't see that coming. It's just like, it was kind of like, if you're going to shoot me and he, bam, straight to the I was like, yo! And even the fact that he let Benny live kind of surprised me. I was like, whoa, you really going to do that? That kind of sucks for Benny because, like, obviously a lot of, like, Charlie's top-ranking people are going except for Benny. I mean, it looked like he was still alive after the shootout. I mean, not unless he died in it, but, like, last time we checked, he kind of dove out of the way. So I'm sure Benny's fine and everything, but still. I did like that, um, what... What was it? Kind of fake out that Jet set in motion, like that hitman contractor that she went to. I love him being like, yo, you know, I want you to know I don't fuck lady cops. And Jet's like, me neither. And it's like, oh, you're the type of woman that, what was it he was saying? Basically, I'm paraphrasing here, but it was basically like she's the type of woman that kind of gets what she wants. And Jet's like, oh, it's, it, what made you kind of realize that or whatever, you know? Um,. So I thought that was kind of interesting, like that whole thing was just kind of a setup. Obviously that dude took out quite a few people before he ended up getting taken down himself. That was interesting too, Jet was trying to go for the gun and that guy who's about to die literally picks it up, pulls the trigger. Luckily for Jet, the clip was empty, he was like, oh that would have been nasty. But um, Bastik's leaving with her and everything because it turns out he actually has Alice. Because we saw Evan searching their place, but luckily they had already left. He ended up tracking down Maria. Maria put up a fight, but he knocked her out and ended up getting her phone. Tracked down Phoenix and Alice ended up taking her. Phoenix, I was like, yo, that was pretty dope of her taking like the shortcut through the woods and everything. She caught up in everything, but they still got away. And you know... That basically, even Bessick was saying that this whole thing was Victor's idea, the whole, like, cleaning house situation. So, he's like, oh, like, you know, I probably had, he's like, oh, did you really think that this would be the end of all be all because I've got stuff set in motion? Idiotically for him, he didn't realize Jet has stuff set in motion. Fred takes his shot, which I guess the ecstasy had run off. I kind of feel like that might not be the case, considering the fact is that he hit him in like, didn't he hit him in like the throat or something? He didn't hit him with a headshot, so I think the ecstasy might have still been a thing. But learning that, oh, he still has my daughter, so I have to like, she covered the blinds, closed the blinds, so it's like she can deal with Bessick herself. There was part of me that was kind of hoping she'd get the final blow no matter what. She set Fred up to do it. Anyway, but I, I kind of wanted her to get the final blow. But she did get to stick the knife in him and everything. And it's like, where's my daughter? Because it makes sense, too, because he made a kind of reference to it, too, earlier. Because he made the whole point about, like, how, like, oh, you know, having your child taken from you. You know all about, you know all about that, wouldn't you, uh, Jet? Because he had gotten with Crystal after she had already lost, uh... Charlie Jr. because uh, Char Charlie had already taken him. But it's like, you can make that kind of be like double meaning because obviously like she lost her daughter because the whole Maria like taking Alice, you know, while Jet was in prison. So there's that, you know, didn't want social service to get her daughter. But at the same time, it's also because he probably already at that point in time definitely already knew that Evans had Alice, you know, so... And he wouldn't give up the information saying that basically the Russians are going to skin her alive and Victor's going to come after her. And she's like, I'm going to take my chances, opens the blinds and lets Fred get the final shot. And I still kind of like, ooh, you know, it's like at the very least, it doesn't settle everything. But at the very least, it kind of gives payback for one. You kidnapped my daughter. Two, you just killed Charlie. And three, you killed Quinn. So the, you were just deserving. Middleman or not, you kind of had to die. You, just everything that he did threatening her daughter and everything threatening her family it's like you had to go down you know because you know that stuff that hit jet too like really hard and that in itself is what i think is a very once again i've always talked about how calm cool and collected jet is under these circumstances and it's magnificent obviously it's too much and she ends up breaking down because it's like in her position she has to be calm cool and collected to make everything like under these circumstances even charlie getting killed in front of her it shook her a little bit but she kind of like Okay, snap to it. It's time to get you, put your game face back on. It was like, that's super impressive. But obviously, like, losing Alice being kidnapped, getting away from the situation. It's like, okay, we're away from it. Fred got out. We got away. But it's like, okay, and now it's all hitting me at once, you know? You know, she's trying to get in contact with uh, Jackie. Jackie is on at the end of the rope. You know, it was like an hour before the meeting and stuff. Well, an hour ago at that point in time, but uh, Jackie was doing the whole Russian roulette thing. I won't lie to you. 
I kind of, I was actually worried every time he pulled the trigger. I was thinking maybe there's a part of him that would pull it. And he, multiple times he pulled it. He pulled it like a total of four times in the episode. And it's just like, jeez. And then I was like, come on, answer the phone, Jackie. Answer the phone. She got something important to tell you. And lo and behold, she drops it. Being like, I have a daughter, Alice. Oh, also at the same time. Well, did he already know about Alice? Alice probably wasn't like a big secret or whatever. But it's like, obviously the whole her being his daughter thing. I was like, dude, yes. Because like, I mean, I think that was kind of the whole point to let us know ahead of time that that was a big secret and to drop that on Jackie especially because Jackie felt like he had nothing he lost Josie it's like I go out there I'm a you know I'm gonna be arrested anyway so it's kind of like I had nothing to live for and just everything had fallen apart he hated who he had become but now he knows like wait not only is this for Daisy but it's also like this is my daughter I've got no I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you find her you know so he found purpose again and granted beyond that who knows if he's gonna stick around but I think the potential of knowing his daughter of course that's going to change things. And, you know, and once again, Jet breaking down. The entire season, we've never seen her break down like that. Like I said, she's always been so calm, cool, and collected. Because even, like, Bessic had made a point of being like, oh, you're, the actions you're making aren't rational. Because you're a thief. You're very, you're very good at what you do. But now you're letting your emotions get the best of you. It's, like, understandably so. But, uh... That was just, I don't know, I just saw that was such a powerful moment seeing her break down like that because she never was like that in the entire season. And of, under, of course, under these circumstances, it would break her down, you know? Like I said, I was sitting here thinking about the whole Charlie situation, about like what happened to his power and stuff like that. Well, once again, we know Victor's kind of clearing the board and whatnot. So it's probably a situation of anything Charlie related. He'll probably kind of like get pulled into his wheelhouse or whatever you know jet you know like getting back to it like jet's breaking down because she doesn't even know if alice is still alive i think alice is alive because alice is meant to be bait obviously like i think jet's going full-blown war potentially in the future just going after victor setting this all in motion trying to get her daughter back like i th i think using um alice's bait is the best way to draw jet in because once again like best like i said he's uh, Victor's trying to clear the board, trying to like deal with any loose end. At the time of me recording this, it hasn't been confirmed whether or not Jet is coming back for a second season. I really hope so because I'd love to see what they do with uh, season two. Because, like I said, there's a lot of stuff that's still open, but most of the storylines I feel like are closed off, like the whole Charlie thing and Bestick. But those were all part of a bigger situation, that being. So Victor thing to see how that all plays out. Obviously, she's got to get you know her daughter back, you know Alice back. What that means about Jackie? What about Maria? Because obviously Maria is not in the best condition. But obviously, if it's about getting Alice back, of course Phoenix, as well as all these different allies. Obviously, Fred McKay. Once again, how that whole Malibu situation. Cause what what was her real name? Isn't it like Agatha? Is her real name? No, it was like Abigail, right? So what th that whole love triangle, maybe not even love triangle, but that whole complicated thing that we got hit to do this episode, what's that going to be like in the future is a big question. I'm also curious now that she has killed, well, Bestick is dead. Is there any, is she going to see Rufus anymore in the future? Because obviously there's still a lot of her past we can always circle back to. So we got little bits and pieces of her past kind of leading up to like, kind of understanding how she got to where she is now to a certain extent with a lot of people she worked with in the past to understand who they are and why she goes to them in the present you get what I'm trying to say so I'm curious about you know learning more about Jet's past because she drops a little stuff here and there but she's still kind of an enigma um, the whole Vivian situation like where that stands also like I said with the Benny thing and the whole uh, what's her face situation Rosalie where the hell is that situation potentially going to go in the future? I'd love to know. I'd love to see what kind of thieving she'd go up against. Because like I said, this is like a full-blown, we're going to war because you took my daughter type of thing. But I'm sure she's she's only got one target in mind in getting, you know, Alice back. But there's probably a lot she has to go through. Especially because can't really rely on, you know, Jackie as a cop because he's got to avoid being arrested for everything he did at Charlie's place so that's just going to be a whole complicated mess dodging the law in that regard too so it's definitely going to be interesting to see how this ultimately all ends up playing forward I, like I said I hope we do get a second season so we could get answers to all that and see how this whole situation unfolds but really that's all I want to talk about until the next time we meet be happy be safe love like to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye